Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is 50 mistakes, 50 mistakes that restaurant owners make. George, what's the question online today? What, what, well, so the question today would be, what are the, the two most important restaurant policies? Policies for guests or policies for staff? This is a staff policy. Staff so what policies. What are the two most important staff policies a restaurant owner should give okay. their, their staff? Their staff. Okay, good. Now, understand, it's a great question, understand we're going through one of the biggest culture, we are going through the biggest cultural change ever right now. The way we communicate, um, the way we need instant gratification, uh, the way generation X, generation Y, just everything has changed so drastically in the last 30, 40 years. Um, of course, every restaurant should have a handbook with a tons of policies, but if you had to choose from one or two policies, the most important policies a restaurant owner or small business should have intact today. Here they are, ready? First one, sexual harassment. You have to cover your ass. This, you know, you have to train your staff that if anybody offends them in any way, not just sexually, it can be racist ways or anything, that um, any other staff members offend them, that they need to notify owner or management within 24 hours of it happening. And the staff needs to understand that because nowadays in this time of age, you know, people are money hungry, people, you know, want to make accusations. And to be fair to the restaurateur, to the business owner, if somebody comes to me in 24 hours and says something happened, I can take care of it, right? I can sit down with the other person, I can suspend the other person, I can fire the other person. But if they come to me three months later and say so-and-so has been bothering me for the last two months, three months, I'm going to be at fault as a restaurant owner, right? Because it's happening in my workplace and ultimately, ultimately it comes back to me. So your staff needs to be trained that if anybody does anything that offends you, come to us right away within 24 hours to make your valid claim so we can do an investigation. And I think a lot of restaurants that I know don't even have a policy intact. So the first step is to get a policy intact. That's the most important thing. It doesn't need to be sexually orientated. It can be racist. It can be other kind of, any other kind of discrimination. And they need to have a time limit that as a restaurant owner, as a business owner, you can take care of and conduct an investigation so you don't have any accusations coming way back. So then if they do say something four months later or they quit and then they make an accusation, you can say, well, they signed this paper and they never made a complaint. They, had a, they have a 24-hour policy. We're willing to fix it. As a business owner, I'm willing to take care of it, but if I don't know, I can't take care of it. So I can only assume that this person is making this up now, right? Because people say things after they get fired, really, or after they quit a job, or after, after the separation has happened, that's when they can say something, you know, typically. The other one is social media. Social media, big one. Right? The way we communicate has changed, you know? You get 10 staff members that come into work, right? Okay. You're not that busy, one of the staff members goes home early, they go out and tweet or Facebook, hey, not busy time at restaurant XYZ, um, not busy time, I'm going home, I'm going to a party, this or that. It gives the impression that your restaurant's not busy, right? Yeah. Why would, you, why would you want that impression? But it goes way beyond that though, because now staff can start saying other things, they can start, now a lot of staff are gung ho and they're proud of where they work, right? So they can easily go online and say, hey, we have the best steaks in town. The other restaurant across the street doesn't have good steaks. They can make accusations about other restaurants. Then once again, that separation happens, they can make accusations about their own restaurants. Or they can say, hey, I'm at work tonight and it sucks. Right. I'm at work tonight dealing with, dealing with you know, pain, XY, with eight, pain in the ass customers. Or even worse, they could say, at work tonight dealing with a celebrity and list the celebrity's name which is really not good. The celebrities go to a restaurant because they trust the restaurant, um, typically, unless it's their first time. And they go to it because they, they repeat, because they go, they trust it. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to be signing autographs and having people, you know, um, bothering them while they eat. They want to eat like us, like humans. So if you're going to announce that a celebrity's at your restaurant and draw more people and bring attention to this person, it's not going to look good. So here's the first thing to understand with a social media policy. You have to have a confidentiality agreement first with your staff, okay, to let them understand that they can't break certain confidentiality code, ethic codes of the restaurant. So with that being said, if you have staff that is tweeting, Facebook, and they have to give disclosure, they ha you have to say, you know, they have to, they have to identify themselves as who they are that they work for. Because somebody going out there and, and just saying all these great things about a restaurant, you know, you need, they need to know where the basis of it's coming from. Um, and use common sense. Um, don't offend 
other businesses in the area. Don't offend the competition. Um, don't offend other staff members. Don't if, don't. You're there to you're there to promote in a good way. Which a lot of times I tell you, George, or I tell you, hear me tell staff, hey, take a picture of the tap handles today and tweet out tweet out Instagram what we have on taps, right? Because we want to show off what we have. Yeah, why not? We don't want to downgrade the other restaurants. We don't want to you know we want to play fair. So it's a whole playing fair fair scene, um, which which is extremely important. So you want to promote, play fair. Use common sense and protect the integrity of confidentiality of the restaurant. So you're not going to give away, like, uh, I'm against secret recipes. And if you see that in any of my videos, I don't like secret recipes whatsoever. If you're going to a restaurant, you want to know what's in your food. You have every right to know what's in your food. And I can't stand when certain restaurants say, oh, that's a secret, right? No, I'm eating your food. I didn't know, need to know what's in your food. Well, if you work at one of those restaurants and you tweet out the secret ingredients, then you're breaking a confidentiality code of the restaurant. So understand that you need to have the confidentiality code the social media policy, and of course, sexual harassment. So those are the two. Third is the confidentiality, I guess, in there. You need to have it as a policy. But confidentiality is something that you need to make sure that your staff understands from day one. You know, um, you know you're here to protect. Protect and represent the brand. Represent. Represent. So that was a great question today, George. Um, we'll do one. We'll, we have tons of questions coming in via email and everything. So we'll, and comments. On YouTube so if you have a question leave a comment here or you can email me at help at 50 mistakes.com h-e-l-p help at 50 mistakes you can spell it out 50 or f-i-f-t-y 50 mistakes.com I'll be happy to answer the questions thank you for watching if you like this video hit like subscribe to my channel and pass it on thanks for watching I'm chef Marcus Giuliano